If I have some velocity changing near the wall, but it's changing so fast I can hardly measure it, it might as well be like the wall is moving. Right? If I resolve this, yes, there's a difference. But if I can't see it, I can't resolve it, if it's really thin, it's basically as if the wall is moving. And that principle allows us to take this very simple relation that only applies for a wall in a semi-infinite domain, and it allows us to completely change the way we think about electroosmotic flows in geometries of any arbitrary complexity. When I solved Navier-Stokes, with an electrostatic forcing term, I solve this expression, and I typically use the boundary conditions that u perpendicular to the wall is equal to 0, and u parallel to the wall is equal to 0. This is no penetration. This is no slip. This is a classic way that I would solve a fluid mechanics problem if I had an extra body force term associated with the electrokinetics. But if this region where the charge is changing near the wall, if that's really thin, super thin, thin enough that I can ignore all the details of what's going on and only look at the integral effects that we got from this integral boundary layer analysis, now I can take this problem and turn it into a problem I'm really quite familiar with and can solve pretty easily. And I don't even need to pay any attention to this. Because what I'm going to say is, well, wait a second. Outside the electrical double layer, and electrical double layer is the term I'll use for this region near the wall where it's not a net electroneutral. Outside that, the only thing it sees is that there is an increased velocity relative to the wall associated with this charge. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I'm going to keep this. Instead, I'm going to say that the velocity at the wall is given by this expression. And then I'm going to ignore that. So the formulation I wrote in white gives me the correct answer everywhere in this flow. The formulation I put in red, or the adjustments I made in red to this formulation, gives me the correct answer everywhere outside the electrical double layer. It gives me the right answer everywhere except for the 10 nanometers closest to the wall. Right? So I give up the details of the 10 nanometers by saying, rather than including this as a body force term, I'm going to include it as an effective slip term. I'm going to pretend that the wall moves. Right? But the wall doesn't necessarily move with a uniform velocity. It's not like it's just a conveyor belt. The wall everywhere is moving with a velocity that's proportional to the local electric field. Right? So in a straight tube, the electric field is uniform everywhere, so the slip velocity is uniform. But if I look at the electroosmotic flow around a curve, the electric field on the inside is high, the electric field on the outside is low. So my wall velocity is going to be high on the inside and low on the outside. And if I have any non-uniformities in the chemistry, now this is changing as well. Right? But by doing this, I actually have taken all of the electrokinetics out of the problem, at least out of the governing equation, and I've turned it into a boundary condition. And this is a very good solution for all of the systems where this electrical double layer is small relative to the characteristic size of the problem. This is a great solution for microscale channels. Unsurprisingly, if we try to apply this to a nanoscale channel, this is a really bad assumption because we'll find that we cannot assume this, that this electrical double layer is very thin. So we can take the same block diagram that I wrote here, and I can write a different version of it, one that focuses on governing equations and boundary conditions. And when I do that, this can describe, first of all, what we did today, but also other things that we can do in the near future.
We could start with this, which is a general formulation of the Navier-Stokes equations with electrokinetic forcing and the no-slip and no-penetration conditions. We can convert this into a simpler form where I eliminate this using my effective slip and I can eliminate the first two because of either unidirectionality or more generally the fact that the Reynolds number is low. And I can write this simpler form, which basically just has the Stokes equations, plus the vector specification of the velocity at the wall being given by <coughs> this uh, permittivity. Sorry, this is not, that's epsilon not epsilon not. The permittivity of the medium times the vector extrinsic electric field. If we assume that our wall is an insulator, which is the case for most microfluidic devices, the electric field will by definition be parallel to the wall. And that's consistent with the flow being parallel to the wall times this chemical specification that tells us the potential difference between the wall and the bulk and this viscosity.